In this video, we're going to understand what is the agreement between China and Solomon Islands all about? What is China's benefit? Let me first show you where Solomon Islands are located. It is located in the South Pacific Ocean and lies on northeastern side of Australia. The capital of Solomon Islands is Honiara and this nation comprises of hundreds of islands. To be more precise, there are six major islands and over 900 smaller islands. These islands are part of the Oceania continent. Most of the population resides in capital city of Honiara, Malaita province, Western province and Guadalcanal province. The total population of this island is somewhere around 7 lakhs. Since it is a group of islands, in geography there is a term given to it, it's called archipelago. You'll also find volcanic islands and atolls. I have videos on how archipelagos, volcanic islands and atolls are formed. The links are there in the description or you can directly search it on YouTube. And by the way, during the World War II, some fierce fighting between United States, Commonwealth forces and Japan took place on these islands. One such battle was the Battle of Guadalcanal that happened on August 1942. Before 1975, the Solomon Islands used to be under the British administration. After 1975, Solomon Islands became an independent nation. Now that you have got some idea about the Solomon Islands, let's try to understand the main topic of this video and that is, what kind of agreement did China sign with Solomon Islands? So the first thing that you have to understand is that China and Solomon Islands signed a security agreement on 19th April 2022. Whenever you hear the word security agreement, always remember there has to be military involvement. Although the fine details of this security agreement has not been publicly released. But if you look at the broad nature of any security agreement, it usually contains deployment of military forces, naval ships and various forms of military exercises. Now to understand the situation of Solomon Islands, what you need to know is that last year, that is in 2021, there was a civil unrest. In the month of November 2021, there was a series of protests and violent riots that happened in Solomon Islands. And the reason behind the civil unrest was, the public were protesting against the Prime Minister of Solomon Islands, Manasseh Sogavare's government, because his government started supporting China instead of Taiwan. Now you may have a question, why are the people of Solomon Islands against their own government's decision of supporting China? So basically all these protesters were members of a specific group called Malaita for Democracy. Solomon Islands is so far away from the South China Sea, an average citizen of Solomon Islands hardly cares about China or Taiwan. That is where you have to understand that in almost every country, whether big or small, you will find leftist ideology groups who subscribe to the Western idea of democracy. And these groups also receive foreign fundings and that is how they interfere in their respective domestic politics. Whenever you hear the word democracy, always remember that somewhere United States and the Western powers have direct or indirect hands. It's a fact across the world. Even in this Russia-Ukraine war, Zelensky's political party's name is Servant of the People and it is based on the ideology of populism, liberalism and pro-European. And today everyone knows that it is because of the United States and European government's support Zelensky is able to fight Russia. Anyhow, let's come back to Solomon Islands. The leaders of the island, including the Prime Minister, blame foreign powers for this civil unrest. Prime Minister Manasseh Sogavare has openly said there are foreign interference over his government's decision to switch alliances from Taiwan to Beijing. Now think about it, who supports Taiwan? Obviously it is the United States and the Western countries. And by the way, when I say Western countries, it also includes New Zealand and Australia. That is why whenever there is any kind of riot or protest in Solomon Islands, immediately the Australian government sends police and military for establishing control. Actually, both Australia and Solomon Islands have signed a bilateral security treaty that allows Australian police, defense and other civilian personals to be deployed in Solomon Islands in case of an emergency. Plus, if you look at geographically also, the next big developed country nearest to the Solomon Islands is Australia. So naturally, it makes sense that only they can reach the spot early. Anyhow, so last year's civil unrest in Solomon Islands happened because the government switched sides from Taiwan to Beijing. Now I want you to think about it for a second. You must be aware of the China-Taiwan issue, right? It is happening since 1949. China considers Taiwan as part of its own territory and it badly wants to take control of Taiwan by force. But on the other hand, Taiwan's leaders say that Taiwan is a sovereign state. And then Taiwan has diplomatic relations with 15 countries including the main ones, United States, Australia, Canada, European Nation Unions, Japan and New Zealand. So basically all the Western countries support Taiwan and its sovereignty. Taiwan also has full membership in World Trade Organization, Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, Asian Development Bank and many such intergovernmental organizations. 
So if you look at Taiwan, of course they have full right to be a sovereign country. I'm not denying that. But for a second, if you don't see it from a moral standpoint, you will notice that the Western countries support Taiwan not because they believe in democracy or they share similar democratic values. In fact, the Western countries do a lot of business with China. So just to keep a check on China so that China does not go out of line, the Western countries have started building stronger relationship with Taiwan since past couple of years. Now let me also quickly tell you why Taiwan matters to China. Apart from the territorial integrity, the reason China wants Taiwan is because of its economic capabilities and Western influence. The same thing you will see in Ukraine as well. Why do you think Russia attacked Ukraine? Russia has constantly told Ukraine not to be part of NATO or any other Western alliance. Because Russia doesn't want the Western military installations anywhere near to its own borders. The same thing is with Taiwan. China does not want Taiwan to be the next Ukraine. Because China is aware of the fact that the American as well as the NATO forces are going to build military installations in Taiwan. And that is going to be a direct threat to the Chinese foreign policy. Plus China is very smart and it knows that whatever today Russia is facing in terms of sanctions, tomorrow it can happen to China as well. Plus Taiwan's electronic sector attracts the greatest share of its foreign investment. Taiwan's semiconductor manufacturing company is the world's largest contract chip manufacturer and Asia's most valuable listed company at $600 billion. On top of it, China and Taiwan's economies are very much dependent on each other. China is Taiwan's biggest export partner with an export value of $515 billion from January 2017 to January 2022. More than double the United States, which is the next biggest partner. China imports more chips from Taiwan than it does on oil. That means China is very much dependent on Taiwan for its electronic and manufacturing industry's key components. And then if you remember from 2018, during Trump's presidency, there was an ongoing economic conflict between China and United States, which was also termed as China-United States trade war. And if you remember, both the countries had put sanctions on each other. So because of the US-China trade war and then because of the COVID-19 virus, China's name around the world started declining. Many Taiwanese and foreign companies that were based in mainland China, they started relocating back to Taiwan. Because of this, if you see, Taiwan actually became an indirect beneficiary of the US-China trade war and COVID-19 pandemic. So the Western countries do not want to let go the leverage on China. And the leverage is basically Taiwan. That is why when the Solomon Islands Prime Minister Manasseh Sogaware signed a security pact with China and extended his support towards Beijing and not Taiwan, United States, Australia, Japan, New Zealand showed concern and they did not like it. In fact, the Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison even said that a Chinese military base in the Solomon Islands would be a red line for his government and Australia's sovereignty. That means the Western countries are worried what if China builds a military base in Solomon Islands. And as I said, the fine details of the security agreement has not been publicly released. But if you look at the United States, Japan and Australian government statements, you will realize that they are worried about the fact that what if China tomorrow builds a military installation in Solomon Islands. If you look at Solomon Islands, you will realize that it occupies a strategic position for shipping lanes and communications in the Pacific Ocean. In fact, in 2018, China offered a deal to Papua New Guinea, the island west of Solomon Islands, for developing their naval base. But instead, the government of Papua New Guinea made a deal with Australia and United States. So a deal that was rejected in 2018, today in 2022, China is making it happen in Solomon Islands. This is what is the main concern for the Western countries, that is United States, Australia, New Zealand and Japan. That means this whole issue is turning out to be a power grapple of the Pacific Ocean. And if you know, China already has the world's largest navy. But then in terms of having foreign military bases, China is nowhere to the United States. United States maintains around 800 military bases in more than 70 countries across the world. For China, I think there is only one naval base in Djibouti near the entrance of the Red Sea, which was opened in 2017. Apart from that, China has no other official bases abroad. The reason United States has so many military bases in abroad is because United States form alliances. But if you look at China, it is not interested in forming alliances and commitments. It only makes economic and military agreements and arrangements. But if you see the larger goal of both United States and China is same. They want to have as much control of the world as they want to protect their interests. To the northwestern side of Solomon Islands, approximately 2500 to 3000 kilometers away, you will find the island of Guam. Today Guam is United States territory and United States has a huge naval as well as air base in Guam. It is part of United States military's ability to exude power and dominance in the western Pacific. And if you remember earlier this year in January, North Korea has successfully tested its ballistic missile Hwasong-12 that has the capability of hitting Guam. 
United States has military bases in Japan, South Korea, Guam, Philippines, Hawaii, New Zealand, Australia and Thailand. US military bases in Guam, Okinawa, Japan are very much within the range of North Korea's ballistic missiles. And everyone knows that North Korea is a proxy state of China. There is a famous saying, China uses North Korea as proxy against South Korea and Japan. On the other side, China uses Pakistan as a proxy against India. So the security agreement that China signed with Solomon Islands is turning out to be a matter of concern for Western countries, especially for United States, Japan, Australia and New Zealand. Because anything that happens in the Pacific Ocean can be easily observed and monitored by China. If China builds a military base in Solomon Islands, then it can better observe the maritime exercises and activities of rivals and exude power across the Pacific Ocean. And of course, in return, China is going to reward Solomon Islands with Chinese investments, tourists, development plans that may possibly bring prosperity to the islands. And who knows, China may even support the present government of Solomon Islands in maintaining its grip over domestic politics. And think about it, watching Solomon Islands prosper, nearby countries and their islands will also feel the urge of approaching China for similar development plans. Because the fact of the matter is, all these specific islands suffer from poverty, unemployment and lack of infrastructure, which unfortunately the bigger nations like Australia, New Zealand, Japan and United States have not been able to provide, or maybe they did not want to provide. So all these problems can be looked up as an opportunity and that's exactly what China is doing, because China has money. Similarly, if you look at it from Solomon Islands point of view, even they realize their geostrategic importance. So don't be surprised if the Solomon Islands government uses that as an opportunity for seeking new alliances and starts playing off one partner against another to extract benefits. After all, diplomacy is all about giving upfront assurances and then doing something else behind. So even Solomon Islands is going to do diplomacy. On one hand, it will reassure Australia and the Western countries that everything is fine and seek Australia's help as much as they can. Then on the other hand, they will also explore options with China and even there they will try to extract negotiations. And then after a while, watching Solomon Islands adopt this kind of strategy, nearby islands of Oceania will also follow the same strategy in playing off one partner against another. As of now, the Australian Prime Minister is simply persuading Solomon Islands government for not forming any kind of alliance with China. Because this deal has actually made a lot of news within the domestic politics of Australia. Australian politics have been dominated by two political groupings. One is the conservative coalition of the Liberal and National Parties. Scott Morrison is the leader of it. And the opposition is the Australian Labour Party. And their leader is Anthony Albanese. The government of Australia as well as the opposition is making effort to gain political mileage out of China-Solomon Island deal. Because election in Australia happens every three years. And this year's election is going to be held in this month of May. So within the Australian politics, this issue is gaining a lot of traction. That is why you will see Australian government is so much vocal about this deal. And in almost every news article, you will find Australia making a lot of noise. Anyhow, so this drama in Pacific Ocean will turn out to be very interesting. I'll keep an eye on it and will keep you updated if there is any further news. As of now, this is all that's going on in Solomon Islands. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.